February 2. Moses returns to Egypt. So Moses went back home to Jethro, his father-in-law. Please let me return to my relatives in Egypt, Moses said. I don't even know if they are still alive. Go in peace, Jethro replied. Before Moses left Midian, the Lord said to him, Return to Egypt, for all those who wanted to kill you have died. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and headed back to the land of Egypt. In his hand he carried the staff of God. And the Lord told Moses, When you arrive back in Egypt, go to Pharaoh and perform all the miracles I have empowered you to do. But I will harden his heart so he will refuse to let the people go. Then you will tell him, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I commanded you, Let my son go so he can worship me. But since you have refused, I will now kill your firstborn son. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife, Zipporah, took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said, A bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. Now the Lord had said to Aaron, Go out into the wilderness to meet Moses. So Aaron went and met Moses at the mountain of God, and he embraced him. Moses then told Aaron everything the Lord had commanded him to say, and he told him about the miraculous signs the Lord had commanded him to perform. Then Moses and Aaron returned to Egypt and called all the elders of Israel together. Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses, and Moses performed the miraculous signs as they watched. Then the people of Israel were convinced that the Lord had sent Moses and Aaron. When they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Moses and Aaron speak to Pharaoh. After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so? retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. But Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with the sword. Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? Get back to work. Look, there are many of your people in the land, and you are stopping them from their work. Making bricks without straw. That same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are crying out, let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. So the slave drivers and foremen went out and told the people, This is what Pharaoh says, I will not provide any more straw for you. Go and get it yourselves. Find it wherever you can, but you must produce just as many bricks as before. So the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use as straw. Meanwhile, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to push hard. Meet your daily quota of bricks, just as you did when we provided you with straw, they demanded. Then they whipped the Israelite foreman they had put in charge of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas either yesterday or today, they demanded. So the Israelite foreman went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him, Please don't treat your servants like this, they begged. We are given no straw, but the slave drivers still demand make bricks. We are being beaten, but it isn't our fault. Your own people are to blame. But Pharaoh shouted, You're just lazy, lazy. That's why you're saying, Let us go and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Now get back to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must still produce the full quota of bricks. The Israelite foreman could see that they were in serious trouble when they were told, You must not reduce the number of bricks you make each day. As they left Pharaoh's court, they confronted Moses and Aaron, who were waiting outside for them. 
The foreman said to them, May the Lord judge and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword into their hands, an excuse to kill us. Then Moses went back to the Lord and protested, Why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why did you send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman, he has been even more brutal to your people, and you have done nothing to rescue them. Promises of Deliverance Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name, Yahweh, to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord." So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen any more. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me any more. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I'm such a clumsy speaker. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. The Ancestors of Moses and Aaron These are the ancestors of some of the clans of Israel. The sons of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Their descendants became the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul. Shaul's mother was a Canaanite woman. Their descendants became the clans of Simeon. These are the descendants of Levi, as listed in their family records. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived to be 137 years old. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei, each of whom became the ancestor of a clan. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. Kohath lived to be 133 years old. The descendants of Merari included Melai and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites as listed in their family records. Amram married his father's sister, Jochebed, and she gave birth to his sons, Aaron and Moses. Amram lived to be 137 years old. The sons of Izhar were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphan, and Zithri. Aaron married Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab and sister of Nashon, and she gave birth to his sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Aser, Elkanah, and Abiasaph. Their descendants became the clans of Korah. Eleazar, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Putiel, and she gave birth to his son Phinehas. These are the ancestors of the Levite families listed according to their clans. The Aaron and Moses named in this list are the same ones to whom the Lord said, Lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. It was Moses and Aaron who spoke to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. When the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I'm such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me?
Aaron's staff becomes a snake. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I command you, and Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will make Pharaoh's heart stubborn so I can multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even then, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you, so I will bring down my fist on Egypt. Then I will rescue my forces, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. When I raise my powerful hand and bring out the Israelites, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron was eighty-three when they made their demands to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will demand, Show me a miracle. When he does this, say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called in his own wise men and sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hard. He still refused to listen, just as the Lord had predicted.